about to bring you takes place during that great and colorful era known as the gay 90s. It's a newspaper story, and it was written by a newspaper man, Richard Harding Davis, who has long been regarded as the greatest war correspondent of all time. Next. But it was this story that made Davis famous as a writer of fiction. It was always his favorite, and it has long been one of ours. The hero is a newspaper copy boy by the name of, uh, let's see now, Mulligan, Hannigan, Flanagan, Gallagher, 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 Gallagher. Oh, Gallagher, Gallagher, running down the street after another news beat. Gallagher, Gallagher, wearing out his shoes, nosing around for who, what, when, where, how, what, when, where, why, what. He'd follow up a story no matter where it led. Unafraid, he made the grade where others feared to tread. Feared to tread. No slicker could out trick him. No one was quicker than. Quicker than. That sharp as a thorn, natural born. Newspaper man, that's Gallagher, Gallagher, running down the street after another news beat. Gallagher, Gallagher, wearing out his shoes, nosing around for who? Fellas, you took the words right out of my mouth. Now let's meet Gallagher. through Red Devil's country's one buck. You don't want to get beat up, you pay up. Hi. Who wants it first? Give up, Gallagher. Five against one. What's a buck? You got a big job with a paper. She's at the cops. <laughs> I saw you heave that, Gallagher. Right up your own head. Just want to make sure you'd come a-running, Officer Riley. None of your blarney now. You could have yelled. Me? Yell for a cop? Well, that'll be the day. You'll have to excuse me, sir. I'm late for work. Thanks for your help.
morning, Officer Madden. Now, off with you. The bank doesn't open at 10 o'clock. Now, go on. What's Lieutenant Gary and Mr. White nothing, talking about? Nothing, nothing. There been a stick-up or something? No, no, off with you, I said. And don't block the way to the regular employees. Boy, lady. Good morning, Officer Madden. What's going on? Oh, just a little difficulty. Now, there's no need for alarm. Go to your regular stations and no high stakes, ladies, if you please. Huh? I just can't believe it. 100,000 in negotiable bonds and cash. How could he possibly? I mean, it just can't be Mr. Hade. Why, he was always such a gentleman. Never mind the excuses. If you're late just once more, you're fired. Here, rush this down and compose it. No, it's on the job, sir. I said rush it. Okay, sir. If you don't want to hear about the million-dollar robbery and murder that just happened next door under our noses, and we turn out to be the laughing stock in newspaper row, that's okay by me, sir. Gallagher! You call me, sir? What was that you were saying? I was saying, sir, on my way to work Get this to morning, the point. The First National Bank, sir, it was robbed. Over $100,000 was stolen and a watchman was killed. Lieutenant Gary just got... Gallagher, me. so help me. The gospel, sir. Brownie. Yeah? Get next door to the bank and see what's up. Rushing right off, Chief. If I find out that you've been pulling my leg, I'll scalp you, kill you, and fire you in that order. Yes, sir. Now... Would you mind taking that down to composing like a nice young man? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. I was on my way when you called me back. I hear Kilrain and Kowinski's fight next week. You gonna cover it? You bet. It's a must. Where are they holding it? This is bare knuckle, Gallagher. Illegal. That's why I'm asking. I couldn't possibly divulge confidential information, son, even to you. You gonna make me waste time looking at my other sources? I'm afraid so. Anyway, where would you get the $200 for a ticket? Like to bet I couldn't get in free? <laughs> no, I'm sure you could. Gallagher, so help me. On my way, sir. <laughs> Thousand dollars was taken. That's right. And a guard was killed. That's right. Sorry. Oh, you. How was that lead? Hot stuff. The bank just called in a Winkleton detective. A Winkleton detective? The biggest crime story of the year. We'll beat the town with this one, kid. You hang around here picking up copy, we won't. Oh, yeah. Gosh, a Winkleton detective. I have customers waiting, Officer Madden. Is there any need to remain closed? No, not anymore. I'll open up here. feel sure that your employee, Hayde, not only killed the watchman, but absconded with the money in the bond? Oh, yes, yes. All right, but I wouldn't be too sure he skipped town. That could be just what he wants us to think. How did he lose his finger? 
A hunting accident when he first came to work for us. Hunting accident? And that was the little finger of his right hand? That's correct. Was he at all familiar with firearms? Crack shot. On all the club's prizes. Uh, that's what's so shocking about all this. A man of his background and breeding uh, doing this to me. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. A man who lives for nothing but money and gambles it all away can turn just as desperate as the most hardened criminal. Well, if there's anything else unexpected comes up, I'll be at the Hotel Metropole. Uh, in case I forgot to mention it, Mr. Sneed, I'm personally offering a thousand dollars reward for any information leading to Hage's capture. We Winkleton men need no incentive beyond our duty, sir, but it is a noble gesture. Goodbye, Mr. Wyeth. That'll be a nickel, sir. A nickel? Jimmy always charges a dime. Half price a day, sir. I only have time to do one shoe. Here's your two bits. Gee, thanks, Gallagher. You can pull my outfit any time. <laughs> Yes? My name's Gallagher. I know this town inside out. I know it. Uptown, downtown, underground, just about everybody in it. <laughs> you do, huh? I'll be on the lookout for Hade, and if I get a lead, I'll pass it on. Now, you do that. What'd you say your name was? Gallagher. Are you at the Metropole under the name of Sneed? Yes, yes, I am. In case I turn something up, the Daily Press gets the first beat. Jake with you? Jake with me. <laughs> You guys know there's a thousand dollars reward out for hate? That's a lot of money. If the chap earned that, he wouldn't have to sneak into fights anymore, would he? Might as well forget it. By this time, he skipped the country. I bet you he's still right here in the city. Go on. And why is the Winkleton detective still in town? That's a shrewd deduction, Brownie. Hayes got a finger missing. He'd be a cinch to spot. And if he was wearing gloves, he wouldn't. That's crazy. He's well known around here, finger or no finger. I'd spot this face anywhere. But not if he was disguised. Stop dreaming. And being a fashionable gentleman, he would most likely disguise himself as a tough, right? No, wrong. Wrong? Toughs don't wear gloves. It's the first thing Hayden would have thought of, how to hide that missing finger. And to do that, he'd have to dress himself like a gentleman. That's the only way he could wear gloves and get away with it. You mean stuff his glove finger with cotton or something? Yeah. And the first time he takes those gloves off in public, he's a goner, and he knows it. Boy, I'm sure going to be on the lookout. Just picture the whole thing right now. A gent with his finger sticking out like this. Why, I'm gonna walk up to him real friendly like a bunk of waters. I'm gonna shake his hand. And if I feel that finger ain't real flesh, it just wanted cotton, well, I'm gonna hang on to him and I'm gonna yell like a dick and someone say, cops, get the cops, I got me a kill. Mr. Crawley. And you were saying, sir? I understand you come from a very large family, Gallagher. Yes, sir. Besides mom and pop, I got nine brothers and sisters. Uh-huh. Then if something dreadful should happen to you, your mother wouldn't miss you very much, would she? No, sir. If you don't mind, Mr. Dwyer, tomorrow's edition would appreciate a column of your deathless prose. Brownie, if I have to tell you once more to finish that yarn, so help me. Now hear this, all you amateur detectives. If any one of you gets arrested for assaulting an innocent citizen, because he's wearing gloves, the Daily Press will not only not bail you out, we will fire you. And as for you, young man, if you as much as glance sideways at any gentleman wearing gloves, you needn't bother coming back to this office because you already will have been fired retroactively. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
Give me that back. You live here? Who wants to know? My pa, he runs a place. Do you live around here? No. If you don't live around here, what you doing here? I'm on a story. On a what? Story for my paper. I'm a reporter. Yeah, I'll bet. It says press, see? See where it says Gallagher? That's me, reporter for the Daily Press. Got a cigarette? 
No. I mean, I guess I forgot to bring mine. You want me to go get some? Skip it. I'll make do without one. Hey, I bet you came to report about the fight. The fight? Yeah, you were the real reporter. You'd know about the fight. You mean the bare knuckler for who's going against John L? Gosh, how'd you find out? You just told me. Except I don't believe it. If so, then prove it. I proved I was a reporter, didn't I? Uh, all right. I'll prove it. Come on. Now, if my pa finds out me telling you, he'll tan me. You're not going to tell anybody, are you? You're talking to a newspaper man. We don't ever tell our source of news to anybody. Not even to the cops? Especially not even the cops. All right. Open the window and you can take a look. Leave it now. So you got a ring. What's it prove? Proves it's going to be a fight, doesn't it? Between a couple of local yokels. Now, what kind of a fight is that? Jake Kilrain and Joe Kowinski. You calling them yokels? Just making sure I can trust my sources. Let's in on something. Recognize him? Uh-uh. He ain't that gent come up the road just ahead of me? Oh, you mean the fellow wearing the hard hat and the satchel? Yeah. Ah, that ain't him. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Seen him every day. For how long? About a week. That when he came here? Yeah, Tuesday before last. You sure that's the day? Yeah, it's the same day that the fight promoter talked to my pa. That would make it the day after the murder. Murder? Shh. You want to get a shot? What about murder? What's going on? Look, I'm on this murder case for the paper, see? Wow. And there's this gin who killed a bank guard and stole $100,000. You think that guy's him? That's what I'm trying to find out. Tell me. Is he shy this finger? Well, I don't know. I've only seen him with his gloves on. It's gotta be him. There's some way I can get a look at him. Up close, I mean. I gotta see if he's missing that little finger. Maybe. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Satchel's on the bed. I wonder where he's at. He's probably in the bar. Get me himself some dinner. Yeah. About that time, isn't it? Let's say you and I get some bread and butter with sugar on it. Later. If he is the murderer, what's he doing out here in the country? I'm hiding out, most likely. The town's too hot for him, and they'd be watching the big trains. Do you think he came to see the big fight? I doubt it. It's a secret fight, remember? Well, that's just it. If it's a secret fight, there won't be any cops. And then he'll be safe. Wouldn't he? Be quiet. You're mixing up my mental thinking. Hey, it's open. What's the matter? Out of your right mind? No, I'm just gonna search the room, that's all. You can't do that. Why not? If he's eating his dinner, I got lots of time. Well, what if he just went to the washroom? If he came back, we'd be goners. Not we. Me. Do we get that sugar and bread? Sound like the stolen money? 
sure would tell about if I could see what's in it, though. Said no label. None in the code either. I don't get it. Clothes like this always carry labels, but they've been cut out. Why? That's what I'd like to know. One more link in the chain of suspicion, I'd say. You can trace a man down through things like that. Ever hear how Black Bart was captured? Well, who's Black Bart? A famous highwayman out in the California gold country. A Wells Fargo detective traced him down through Chinese laundry marks in San Francisco. Found out he was living right across from Central Police Station and played poker with the off-duty cops. Wow. Hey, laundry marks. Missing, all right. He's our murderer, then. Sure wish I could be sure. That don't look anything like our guy, does it? Sure don't. Hey, wait a minute. Why didn't I think of this before? It's him, your guy, the murderer. Yeah, it sure is him, all right. I've been looking for you, Mr. Sneed. Stand back, son. You're making me nervous. Something important I got to tell you. Is it the policy of this joint to encourage the patronage of children? Wait, Mr. Sneed, I'm Gallagher, remember me? I found the man you're looking for. Clancy, just a minute. Excuse me, gentlemen. What man? How come you don't leave word with the hotel so the guy can find you? One can't be too careful now. Get on with this. What about I this? I get myself fired and almost risk my life shadowing this guy, and you're hanging around here. One never knows. Rowan may pick up a suspect. Now, my time is valuable, son. Get on with it, please. Get to the point. I found hate. You found hate? Where? There's a thousand dollars reward on him. Yes, I believe there is. I'll split half with you. Well, that's mighty generous of you. Why don't you just tell me where he's at and leave the rest to me? It'd be best if I take you there, sir. It's a ways out of town. Oh, and we better take a cab instead of the train so we can get hate back in secret. You see what I mean? Well, not quite, but it's beginning to look as if I'm just going to have to trail along. So if you'll give me a moment to square up with my friend. We don't leave, sir, till we've made a deal. A deal? What sort of a deal did we have in mind, friend? You arrest Hade secretly and hold him till the Daily Press can print the story. That way you get your man, I beat the rival papers and get my job back, and we both make 500 bucks, see? Yes, yes, of course. Do we got a deal? Yeah, we got a deal. If, uh, is this the man you've been following? No, sir, it's not. This is him. Now, I talked this over with Brownie and Mr. Dwyer. With who? Reporters on my paper. Then we're not the only ones that know about this. No, sir. 
on account of I've been fired, see, and they're the ones who had to talk to boss into holding up the run till 2 a.m. And they know that you've come to me? Well, yes, sir. You got it all tied up in a real neat package, ain't you, boy? Yes, sir. You couldn't ease me out of this now if you wanted to. I can see that. Well, we better get started, sir. If we don't make that 2 a.m. deadline, I'll still be out of a job, and we'll both be out of 500 bucks. I'll get us a cab. Meet you outside. <laughs> Hey, Pete. Who's that? It's me, Gallagher. Where you been? Where I been? I've been busy, that's where I've been. Take it around back with the other hacks, we driver. Who you got there? A Winkleton detective. Does he know about the fight? Yeah. Oh, but he won't squeal. We're just gonna grab Hayden Run. Mr. Sneed? Yeah? This is one of my cooperatives, Pete. Good evening, son. He knows where the room is where Hayden's been hiding out. Go show him, Pete. Won't do any good now. What do you mean? He ain't there, that's why. He ain't there? Yeah. You mean he fleed? He didn't flee. He's in the bar. Where? In the bar, with the sports. He bought a ticket to the fight. Now, why would he want to go and do a thing like that for? Well, I wouldn't know for sure. It could be that he's getting more confidence. Maybe feels lost in a big crowd like that. The criminal mind operates in devious ways. How do you want to handle this, mister? Want to go to the bar and arrest him? Son, that crowd isn't just made up of rich sports. There's gamblers and hoodlums that'd recognize me. Some of them I may have even sent to jail myself. Oh, you see, my life in there wouldn't be worth a plug nickel. What do we do? Well, we just wait till the fight's over, and when everybody's leaving, we just nab Mr. Hayden in the dark. And there's got to be some way where I get a good look at Hayden beforehand. How about we sneak in the barn? I can point Head out to you, and we can watch him during the fight. Hey, it's a good idea. Come on, I'll show you.
gentlemen, we're under bond to keep the peace. Unnecessary noise would have the law done up on our heads, and we'll all go to jail. So please, please, let's keep it down. Gentlemen, a fight to the finish between Jake Kilrain and this corner. ring rules. Each round to last until a man is down. A man's considered down when his knee touches the floor. If a man is unable to continue after a minute's rest, he shall be deemed knocked out and his opponent the victor. Seconds, bring your fighters up for scratch. Shake hands and return to your corners. Twenty on Kilrain of prevailing odds. Commence fighting and may the best man win. Stalling. So smart. He's just figuring out Jake's style. You watch. Jake didn't hurt his hand. He was going good. Yeah. That's why bare knuckles are on their way out. Gloves are a lot less brutal. I'm not so sure about that. What would you rather have busted? Your hand or your jaw? I kind of like to eat. <laughs> Good, Jake's all right. They didn't even wait the full minute. I'm arresting this man. Are you now? Well, I have my credentials. Let's tell it to the lieutenant. Come on, now. 
I'm here on assignment, Lieutenant, not by choice. I'm sorry, Mr. Boyer. Me orders didn't exclude the press. In fact, they just put me father-in-law in one of them wagons out there. Oh, I'll never hear the end of this. What with him being the mayor and one of me wife's relatives? Come on, you two, let's go. I say no. Hold them on out. Come on now. I told you I'd find out, didn't I? Gallagher, what are you doing? Give me your store and I'll get it to the paper. How? Quick, I'm losing time. All right, now move them in the wagons. Hurry up here. Take this one here. Come on, get them out of here. Let's go. Let's. Hey, hold it, hold it, young fella here. There you go. They arrested my father and they'll take him to prison. Now, wait a minute, young fella. Who is your father? Me father owns this place and they'll lock him up. I'll never see him again. Oh, certainly you will, my boy. Now, your father's in that first paddy wagon out there. You go out and say goodbye to him, then you go right home to your mommy like a good boy. This is no place for innocent children. Well, thank you, officer, sir. You have a heart as pure as gold. Move them along here. Lieutenant? Yes? This man claims to be a Winkless and operative, and this is his prisoner. That's right, Lieutenant. J. Havenbrook Sneed. I've come expressly to arrest this embezzler. I think you'll find everything in good order. Could be a trick to keep you both out of trouble. Now, Lieutenant, I wouldn't... Maybe you're what you say you are, and maybe you're not. We look into it more thoroughly down at the station house. Eddie, either the gentlemen get comfortable seats in the paddy wagon. This way, gentlemen. All right, right come on. Move on. Now, 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 I'll get out here. Or two. Good, we'll just make it. Here comes Luke now. Hey, that ain't Luke. It sure ain't. Hey, pull up there. What are you doing with this cab? Where's Luke? I'm helping Luke out, sir. He uh, took a chill. You're lying. Please, sir. Uh, I didn't want to tell on him, but we well, had to drop too much. Oh, now that's possible. Where is he? Cronin Saloon, sir. And being as he couldn't drive, Cronin, that's me father, had me take this rig around to the Bachman's livery stable. That's where I'm going now. Oh, yeah? Then what are you doing with these fans in here? <laughs>
I'll shoot the boy. Don't take another step. I mean it now. Don't take another step. Gallagher, don't move. It's all right, Mr. Schmidt. Come and get him. Put up your hand. Now, give me that gun. Big, brave man. Shooting at an unarmed boy. It was a mighty risky thing to do, son. No, it wasn't, sir. I knew his gun was empty. Hmm? I counted the shots. All six of them. All right, come on. Come on, move! And that's how the Winkleton detective, along with the help of the Daily Press, was able to track down and arrest the city's most wanted and notorious criminal. Now, what's all this about? Crowley, if this is another one of your newspaper stunts, I... Well, I'll be doggone. You weren't fooling, were you? How did you manage to nab him? Read all about it in the morning edition, Lieutenant. Well, what are you waiting for? Get that down in the composing room. Why do you think I've been holding up the run? Let's go. Hey, Brown. Mr. Dwyer's account of the big fight before the cops stopped it. You better send our lawyer over to Torresdale. A fine gentleman like Mr. Dwyer shouldn't be sleeping in jail. Lieutenant? The reward for Mr. Sneed means official, ain't it? With the whole city knowing all the details by morning, how official do you want it? Crowley? I understand young Gallagher here has been fired. Now, is that true? Perish the thought. Where did you hear such nonsense? As a matter of fact, I've been thinking of raising them 50 cents a week. Thanks, Mr. Crowley. Thank you very much. There's an old saying that you can't fight City Hall. Well, I'm not so sure that's true, because in the next episode of our series, Gallagher, the copy boy, does fight City Hall, clears the reputation of his friend, the chief of police, and very nearly loses his life. Here's your anchor. Take this down. Mystery gunman shoot mystery victim in mystery midnight killing. It wasn't midnight. This is a mystery. All mysteries happen at midnight. All right, you take it from there. And there they go, with Gallagher in the lead by a nose. And it's Gallagher's newsworthy nose that leads him to the front page story on our next program. Look, Gallagher, this is another one of your... One of Dutch Mac's gang. He's the crooked cop, not O'Malley. I'm not kidding, sir, because they just tried to kill me. Now, suffice it to say that all are in the name of Frank O'Malley, all are over $1,000, and all have been deposited by the defendant since he became chief of police of this fair city last November. He was and he is my friend. But that has nothing to do with getting out a newspaper. I've got to print the facts as they are. Without you, they couldn't prove a thing. It's a hard world, boy. It's too bad you didn't learn that sooner. What I want to know is what happened to Gallagher between the time he called me to hold the run and now that's what I want to know. Watch for Edmund O'Brien and Roger Mobley to answer the questions who, what, where, when, why, and how. In our next edition with Gallagher. 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 Gallagher, wearing all the shoes, nosing around for who?